Today we have the feast of the Stigmata of St. Francis of Assisi, and you'll notice all of the beautiful prayers referencing the crucifixion, and, uh, and how St. Paul even speaks about carrying the stigmata of our Lord in his body. Well, today, the story of that, with, of St. Francis, how he received the stigmata is this. He was going to Mount Alverno, there to make a 40-day fast in honor of St. Michael the Archangel. When he was there, he, of course, was deep in contemplation on the different mysteries of God and our faith. And when he was there, doing all of his penance and prayers, a seraphim, an angel, appeared to him. He, was, he had six wings, six wings, and when the angel came closer to St. Francis, he noticed also that the angel was crucified. And then, as St. As Francis received great consolation at seeing this, it says he was very joyful at seeing the angel with all of his, his beauty and the wings and everything. The seraphim are some of the most beautiful of all the angels, uh, as they are the highest, one of the highest in dignity. But he said he was saddened when he looked at the angel and saw its crucified form. Well, then all of a sudden, the marks of the stigmata began appearing in the hands and the feet and the side of St. Francis too. And they said, when it started to appear, you could actually see the heads of the nail on the one side of the hand and the points on the other. He kept that all his life. He tried his best to hide them. Of course, he says, because you're, when you receive gifts such as those, you want to hide them out of humility. That's how he thought and how all the saints think. But then sooner or later, God... He doesn't give them just for the sake of having them. He gives them for a reason. And he gave them to St. Francis, as it says in today's collect. The world in the 13th century had grown cold in their fervor towards Almighty God, and this was meant to be a means of heating them up again in their fervor, in their spiritual life. And so through those sacred wounds, the stigmata of St. Francis, many miracles were worked. And many people became more and more fervent in the spiritual life. But this, has, this feast day has a great significance for all of us. And it's all found in the gospel, the words of our Lord. He who wishes to follow me, to come after me, let him deny himself first, take up his cross, and follow me. That's the path to heaven. That is the only way to heaven. You remember that story? I, I referenced it the other day in the sermon. How this certain man, he received a cross. And as he was, he was walking along, he felt it weighing heavier and heavier on his shoulder. And uh, as he began to feel that weight, he began to complain. And so he saw another man walking the same road, with a smaller cross and a lighter cross. And uh, he didn't like his cross either. So he, the first one stopped and as he dropped his cross on the ground because it was so heavy, he looked at the other man with the smaller cross and said, would you like to trade? Well, they both traded and were perfectly happy and they carried it on their way until they came to the end of the road, symbolizing the end of life. And wouldn't you know it, there's a big river that covers it. There is no bridge. They look right and they look left and they go all around. There's no bridge. The only way to the other side of that river, heaven, is through your cross. And so the man who switched crosses, he had the bigger cross at first and took the smaller one, well, he laid it across the river so that it would act as a bridge and didn't quite make it. It was too short, and he couldn't enter into heaven. That is how it is with us. Every day we have some cross to bear, whether it is God that sends us the cross, it's a cross that we don't choose, or whether it's a cross that, well, we have to deal with every day of our life, meaning ourselves. 
We are our own worst cross sometimes because we have our, our faults and we have our predominant faults. And those things enter into everything they, that we do. They influence the way we think, the way we judge, the way we feel, everything. And if we're not ready to deny ourselves and take up that cross and follow him, that is to crucify the old man, put him to death so that Christ can live through us, then we'll be like that man who, refusing his own cross, refusing to carry his own cross, takes another one, always seeking for some other cross that he thinks is better for him and easier. Well, when it comes to the end of our life, if we're that type of person that complains and, and rejects the cross, when it comes to the end of our life, we're going to find our cross is just too short to make it. Be faithful. Today you'll have many crosses, bigger ones maybe, but certainly the small ones. Your spouses might be the, the cross, it might be the weather, it might be work, it might be illness. Those are the ones that God gives you. Take them up cheerfully, because those are the ones that are most sanctifying. You didn't choose them. God chose them for you and proportioned them perfectly for you for today and no other day, but perfectly for you and today. But then there's those others, remember, you have to overcome yourself, your faults, your sins, your failings, to become more and more virtuous so that you resemble Christ crucified. How are you going to do that today? Well, you're going to look for the opportunities to bear your cross. You're going to pray today to your angel and especially to the Blessed Mother for the grace to see those opportunities of denying yourself and taking up your cross to follow our Lord. But above all, you're going to remain faithful to Our Lady. As it said in yesterday's solemnity, she stood at the foot of the cross faithfully. She stood. She didn't fall over. She didn't crouch down and weep. She stood courageously at the foot of the cross. And you're going to stay there in the arms of our sorrowful mother because she's going to hold you up under the cross. You're going to stay there with her all your day long and offer each cross to become more like Christ crucified. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.